Laws of Temperature Radiation I shall commence by mentioning the conclusions which have been drawn from experimental and theoretical work on temperature radiation. Let us consider an enclosure surrounded by bodies which are in temperature equilibrium. In this space, there will be a certain amount of energy contained in the rays emitted by the surrounding substances and crossing each other in every direction. By making the assumption that the temperature equilibrium will not be disturbed by the mutual radiation of the various bodies, Kirchhoff, 1860, showed that the amount of energy per unit volume, as well as the distribution of this energy among the various wavelengths, is independent of the form and size of the space and of the nature of the surrounding bodies and depends only on the temperature. Kirchhoff's result has been confirmed by experiment and the amount of energy and its distribution among the various wavelengths and the manner in which it depends on the temperature are now fairly well known from a great amount of experimental work. Or as it is usually expressed, we have a fairly accurate experimental knowledge of the laws of temperature radiation. Kirchhoff's considerations were only capable of predicting the existence of a law of temperature radiation and many physicists have subsequently attempted to find a more thorough explanation of the experimental results. You will perceive that the electromagnetic theory of light, together with the electron theory, suggests a method of solving this problem. According to the electron theory of matter, a body consists of a system of electrons. By making certain definite assumptions, Concerning the forces acting on the electrons, it is possible to calculate their motion and consequently the energy radiated from the body per second in the form of electromagnetic oscillations of various wavelengths. In a similar manner, the absorption of rays of a given wavelength by a substance can be determined by calculating the effect of electromagnetic oscillations upon the motion of the electrons. Having investigated the emission and absorption of a body at all temperatures and for rays of all wavelengths, it is possible, as Kirchhoff has shown, to determine immediately the laws of temperature radiation. Since the result is to be independent of the nature of the body, we are justified in expecting an agreement with experiment, even though very special assumptions are made about the forces acting upon the electrons in the hypothetical substance. This naturally simplifies the problem considerably, but it is nevertheless sufficiently difficult and it is remarkable that it has been possible to make any advance at all in this direction. As is well known, this has been done by Lorentz, 1903. He calculated the emissive as well as the absorptive power of a metal for long wavelengths using the same assumptions about the motions of the electrons in the metal that Drude, 1900, employed in his calculation of the ratio of the electrical and thermal conductivities. Subsequently, by calculating the ratio of the emissive to the absorptive power, Lorentz really obtained an expression for the law of temperature radiation which for long wavelengths agrees remarkably well with the experimental facts. In spite of this beautiful and promising result, it has nevertheless become apparent that the electromagnetic theory is incapable of explaining the law of temperature radiation. For it is possible to show that if the investigation is not confined to oscillations of long wavelengths, as in Lorentz's work, but is also extended to oscillations corresponding to small wavelengths, results are obtained which are contrary to experiment. This is especially evident from Jean's Investigations, 1905, in which he employed a very interesting statistical method first proposed by Lord Rayleigh. We are therefore compelled to assume that the classical electrodynamics does not agree with reality or expressed more carefully that it cannot be employed in calculating the absorption and emission of radiation by atoms. Fortunately, the law of temperature radiation has also successfully indicated the direction in which the necessary changes in the electrodynamics are to be sought. Even before the appearance of the papers by Lorentz and Jean, 
Planck 1900 had derived theoretically a formula for the black body radiation which was in good agreement with the results of experiment. Planck did not limit himself exclusively to classical electrodynamics but introduced the further assumption that a system of oscillating electrical particles, elementary resonators, will neither radiate nor absorb energy continuously as required by the ordinary electrodynamics but on the contrary will radiate and absorb discontinuously. The energy contained within the system at any moment is always equal to a whole multiple of the so-called quantum of energy the magnitude of which is equal to h nu where h is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of oscillation of the system per second. In formal respects. Planck's theory leaves much to be desired. In certain calculations the ordinary electrodynamics is used, while in other assumptions distinctly at variance with it are introduced without any attempt being made to show that it is possible to give a consistent explanation of the procedure used. Planck's theory would hardly have acquired general recognition merely on the ground of its agreement with experiments on black body radiation, but as you know, the theory has also contributed quite remarkably to the elucidation of many different physical phenomena, such as specific heats, photoelectric effect, x-rays and the absorption of heat rays by gases. These explanations involve more than the qualitative assumption of a discontinuous transformation of energy. For with the aid of Planck's constant h it seems to be possible, or at least approximately, to account for a great number of phenomena about which nothing could be said previously. It is therefore hardly too early to express the opinion that, whatever the final explanation will be, the discovery of energy quanta must be considered as one of the most important results arrived at in physics and must be taken into consideration in investigations of the properties of atoms, and particularly in connection with any explanation of the spectral laws in which such phenomena as the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation are concerned.